Welcome to Focus Montreal, I'm Richard Dagenet. The Power of Movement is Canada's largest yoga fundraiser on February 27th in 12 cities. The event will raise funds for arthritis and autoimmune disease research. Watson, the supercomputer, competed with trivia champions on Jeopardy this week. The chair of McGill's computer science department offers his assessment. First, the former Montreal, uh, no, it's the former Montreal home, yeah, the former Montreal home of a pre-Confederation prime minister continues to crumble. The home of Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine is on Overdale Avenue, a few blocks west of the Bell Centre. It was built in the 1830s, and according to Heritage Montreal, is considered a rare example of the neoclassical greystone mansions built in the Saint Antoine Ward at that time. On February 23rd, a protest will take place to raise awareness about the building. Ashley Clarkson and Selena Antonucci are public history students at Concordia University and co-organizers of the protest. Why does this home mean, mean something to you? Why does this building mean something to you guys? Uh, well, I think it's basically the history that's behind the building, and I believe that it's really important for Montrealers and all of Canada to preserve their history before Confederation, because right now we're preserving every household of every Prime Minister after Confederation. Mm -hmm. but. La Fontaine is basically one of the prime ministers before Confederation, and people are just ignoring his his mansions. So. Yeah, you said this this building in particular makes you sad to see it. Mm -hmm. Why this building in particular? Because of all that, or yeah, and um, I I believe like the history is really important. And when I walk by the house, because it, it's usually on the route that I take to go to school, um, I find it's really sad that the state it's in. It kind of shows um, the indifference of Montreal to mm -hmm. the historic historical building, so I think that's important. Yeah, well, uh, and Red Path, the, the, the mansion, they, they managed to preserve it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah or does that give you hope? Or? Yeah, that really does give me hope because um, I was really afraid that the same thing would happen mm -hmm. that is going to happen to to this building because the Red Path Mansion, what basically happened was uh, they put a, a stop, they weren't able to demolish it, but over the years it's been crumbling, mm -hmm. it's, been, it's been falling to pieces, and a few weeks ago they were going to allow the owners to demolish it and put up condos. And so everybody got really angry and finally they stopped that. So it's, it's going to be saved, but it just makes me wonder, okay, it's saved now, but what's what's going to happen? Yeah, they, they have to do something with yeah. the building. So Selena, what's the goal of the protest? Uh, the goal like the best case scenario. <laughs> best case scenario, uh, we get our message across, the public is aware of this building because right now, it's a, it's on a small street, Overdale. Mm. More people are going towards the Bell Center. They don't really notice this building. You actually have to stumble across this building by accident mm. in order to notice it. So our first goal is to bring public awareness. Second, tell the city of Montreal that they have to do something about it, and hopefully uh, put it to some use, uh, like a museum or you know a historical site that people could go and see for like a tour guide or something. Yeah, that's. Uh, one of the ideas was that it would be a pre-confederation museum and the inevitable condo project you know is another one of the ideas that they're thinking about so what what would happen like let's say you do raise awareness uh the public do you do you want the public to get behind you can the public get behind you is there a way to write to the mayor and to pressure him and then what happens next like you know who would pay the money to restore the building who would well, we're, we, we have a petition online, and we also um, we have a, a whole web page dedicated to it to try and raise awareness, so we're trying to get the public to get behind us on, on the matter. And I believe that the city of Montreal, uh, they could purchase the building and then restore it into a museum for responsible government, like Selena said. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very doable, because we spoke to an architect, uh, his name is Michael Fish, he's actually a really well-known uh, Montreal architect, and he told us that the cost um, wouldn't be that expensive, and he made a whole... Uh, a blueprint of what could be done with this building and he sent it to the city of Montreal but they just seem indifferent. Mm -hmm. You mentioned responsible government. Uh, all you people out there, she gave me a history lesson actually and he was the father of responsible government or you said or? Yeah, he's the father of responsible government with uh, Robert Baldwin. Basically they founded responsible government in Canada because they believed that uh, the government in Canada um, it was a really, it was o overly British, and so they, they, they made a responsible government that everybody could, uh, it was basically everybody could voice their opinions in the assembly. And La Fontaine's uh, very interesting because he made sure that he would always voice his opinion in the assembly in French. And that's why he's also considered the defender of the French language. Wow. Yeah. That, that's, for Quebec, that's... That's, yeah, that's very big. Yeah, yeah. that is very big. It's, some, it's too bad that no one cares and no one's standing up and saying, hey, this house is important to our history here in Quebec and something should be done. Okay, so February 23rd, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, where does it happen? The protest right outside the building, I guess, or yeah, right outside the building. And we'll what are you going to be doing? Like we'll be handing out pamphlets. We'll be uh, we'll also have a camera, so we'll be interviewing people, seeing if they are aware of the history of the building, what surrounding La Fontaine, the house, um, as well as uh, because I mean the house has a history as well about the uh, comp the compensation bill. Mm -hmm. Uh, this compensation bill was passed following after the rebellions and that they were going to cover the damages of lost property during the upper and uh, lower rebellions okay. of 1837-1838. Uh, and Ashley, Selena, there's a senator involved, a Canadian senator? Please. Uh, actually, uh, se Senator uh, uh, Joel, he was actually the one who found out that the house was the uh, the house of La Fontaine. Oh, yeah. Because before that, uh, nobody knew who actually lived in it. And he went through the records when those buildings, because there used to be a lot of buildings on the property. Right now it's just a parking lot, it's kind of an empty, that's what's also like sad about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, he figured out that La Fontaine used to live in that house, that used to be his house when he was a politician, so he put a stop and they didn't demolish the building even though they demolished all the other ones. Okay. Them. Do we have any pre-confederation buildings in, in Montreal? I know there's a couple, uh, Maison Saint Gabriel is one of them, uh, Sir George Etienne Cartier, mm -hmm. National Historic Site, mm -hmm. I think is one of them, but there's not very many. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's why it's another it's another really important piece of our history. And um, La Fontaine has a lot of things that are dedicated to him in the city. Yeah. You know, there's parks, there's the the infrastructure, the tunnels. Okay. There's a there's a hospital. Um, he actually in the park there's a statue of him in the park in Montreal. Right. And there's a statue of him in Boucherville, which is where he was born. So it's just it's odd that they they wouldn't want to preserve this piece of his life. So what do you say to people? who are watching to get them to come out on February 23rd and to help you make a difference in keeping this house standing. To basically just sign our petition, come see us if you're in the area. Uh, we'll be offering Timbits. <laughs> for some Timbits will get people. Out. Yeah, and coffee. Uh, so sign the petition online, voice your opinion to the mayor. We'll be handing out pamphlets and you'll see us there from 11 o'clock. Yeah. What would it mean to you guys to save this building? I mean it a lot. a lot. We're really hoping that the city of Montreal sees what we're doing and they see that the city of Montreal cares and that will make them care more, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that's what this Advocacy Day does achieve. Mm -hmm. Selena Antonucci and Ashley Clarkson are public history students at Concordia University trying to save a piece of Montreal, Quebec, Canadian history. Thank you very much Thank for, you for having us. with us. Man versus Machine, it would seem to be a classic conference.